Shannon and I are still in Crystal River. Uh, we went on the manatee tour this morning. It was awesome. Saw a few manatees. Saw one medium sized one. Saw one really big mama with her baby. Very small baby. Smallest our captain and boat crew had ever seen. Two or three weeks old. Now we're at uh, manatee tour and dive. We're gonna do a, we're gonna go scalloping. We've got a boat. Gonna go catch our dinner. Only uh, only two, three hundred dollars, and we'll go catch about thirty dollars worth of scallops. But it's gonna be fun because we're doing it ourselves. Once you arrive to your snorkeling spot, you will have to anchor the boat and put up a dive flag. Since we were with Manatee Tour and Dive, the boat captain did all of that for us. If you're looking for a tour company to go scalloping, they were really good. Bay scallops are generally found in 4 to 8 feet of water in seagrass beds. Shannon, did you find one yet? Did you find one? <laughs> Go find some dinner. I don't know if that's going to feed everybody, but my first one. You will want to swim against the grass to see the scallops better and it's usually easiest to see them in the areas where the sand meets the edge of the seagrass and it's best to go at low tide if you can. I'm just telling you all what I was told. Shannon and I were actually very bad at finding scallops and didn't find very many. Fortunately our captain and tour guide found several and they were nice enough to give us all of their scallops. If you can't find any scallops, you might try looking for their eyes instead of their shells. Their eyes form two rows of small blue dots. Unfortunately, that didn't help us either. If you are lucky enough to find any scallops, Put them on ice after you catch them to help preserve them. It will also help the shells open up. Our captain showed us how to clean them. Most people use a knife, but he used a big Wait, spoon. Yeah, I'll give you on a bigger one. This one's not the best example. The captain also gave us a good recipe, which I'll show in a minute. All right, so I'm doing dark side up because the meat's just a little off center. So it'll put it just right at center there if you do it dark side up. You just work your way in the edge of the shell, scrape away from the top. Get that out of the way, and there's a little membrane between the guts and the meat. It's kind of a finesse. You sort of scrape them away. Throw them everywhere. That's a nice one. That's, that's last year's. He said he's cleaned thousands of scallops, so he definitely knew what he was doing. This is gonna be a stupid question. How do they get their shells? Like, are they growing? Yeah, just like you grow a fingernail. That's a nice meat. Okay. Yeah, that was big.
first 300,000 take a little bit longer. <laughs> but yeah, I guess if I was to start doing math, in my lifetime, I've probably shot that many at least. Jeez. So I guess this is what $350 worth of scallops look like. Those guys were great though. The captain was great, our tour guide was great. It was nice having a, basically just a private charter. Scalloping was super fun. They're pretty hard to find. We're gonna go home and find a way to cook these up. We camped at Lake Russo RV Park. It was beautiful. If you like water activities, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We also do a lot of hiking, biking, and other activities when we travel. All right, the captain said these are really good with a little bit of uh, cheese and bacon. These have to be good, right? Everything is good with cheese and bacon. Take some of the scallop shells and clean them really well. Then top each one with a few scallops and a little Old Bay seasoning. After that, top with a little cheese and cooked bacon. I assume you can use any cheese you want. We used Habanero Jack. Bake at 350 degrees for 10 minutes or so, or until the cheese is melted, and enjoy. They tasted wonderful.